Okay, I shouldn't be making this video because I'm sick in bed and I'm not feeling very well. I don't know what I'm coming down with, but anyway, um, try to bear with me. Um, what I've got up here on the screen, um, I just drew this up, so never mind my poor artwork. But this is a mock up of um, the magnometer ground station. Um, it's sitting about 15 feet away from me. Um, it's about six feet off the ground on top of a shelf. Um, it's got no electronic um, devices running anywhere near it. Um, I've tried to search for any source of outside interference and I uh, haven't been able to find any aside from whenever I run my microwave um, a sawtooth waveform does show um, that I can pick out immediately but it doesn't it doesn't cause any detections over 200 uh, micro teslas and yes I had to uh, I had to change the detection scale from 100 to 200 micro teslas just because of the uh, number of detections I've been getting lately but anyway what this is showing is two to three months ago when I first started running this experiment nonstop, um, I calibrated it so that the compass hold on one second let me bring up the magnetograph this compass points uh, when I set it up I aim it I turn it until it's pointing due north. Now I did this two days ago and it was exactly on zero. Actually it was fluctuating between zero and 359. And you can go back and see that on the online data. Um, and here two days later it's already at least two degrees off. It's pulling east. If, as you can see it'll go back to north and you can see, see it pulling east. And I've noticed the raw data, the raw data um, echoes this on the y-axis. Especially when there's a spike, you'll see a jump. Um, if this is due north, y, by will be zero, point zero. If it's exactly that magnetic north, um, as it pulls towards the east, it goes in a positive direction. If it was to pull to the west, it would go into the negative direction. Um, so what does all this mean? Let me go back to this drawing. Now I'm being conservative with these numbers, but uh, this is how this this is how the station is set up now. Actually, this line represents how I set it up two days ago. Um, but two months ago, up to three months ago, um, somewhere in that period. When I first set it up, I, t I took a piece of electrical tape, and once I had it set to north, months ago, I set up a uh, calibration line, because I do have to shut down the experiment once in a while, and uh, when I make tweaks to the firmware and whatnot, basically in the communications, it's not in the way it um, samples the data. Uh, but I, I have made improvements in communication and uh, things of that nature. So, as I notice it changing, I add more calibration markers so I can see how much the heading has changed over time. And I drew this little protractor drawing right here just to kind of give you an idea. And I know this is over overstating the angle here but over the past two to three months I've seen a change in about five to six degrees um, where I have to turn this to get it to aim to magnetic north 
Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to make any outlandish claims that we've had a six, six degree pole shift in two to three months. I'm, sim I'm simply putting out the data of what this ground station is telling me. Um, I don't make these numbers up. This is coming from the sensor. Again, I've ruled out any external forces, like I said, besides my microwave, which uh, it, it affects the x axis. In that, like I said, it'll make, if I could get up right now, I would uh, turn the microwave on and show you, but it just causes an oscillation, but it doesn't really, it doesn't, it doesn't cause a change in the heading. It, it's too minuscule of a change. Um, now back, back to the magnetograph for a minute. Now these spikes uh, seem to come in pulses and they only last for a fraction of a second. Um, and this could be any number of things. I ha like I said, I have ruled out it being any electrical um, noise inside the house. And I've tried to isolate the station as well as I can. So these are just, these come in waves randomly. And I've also tried to find the source of this oscillation that seems to start and stop about every eight or between eight and ten minutes. I don't know if it's representative of a magnetic disconnect reconnect, if it's something in the environment, but it uh, it, it comes and goes uh, precisely somewhere between eight and ten minutes um, without fail. And you can see that in, in the uh, you can see that reflected in the online plots as well. But uh, so back to this drawing for a second. So anyway, this is two months ago. This is where this would have been aligned. This edge of the uh, sensor, which is I've got the sensor marked off where it's located approximately inside the housing. Um, this edge would have been aligned with this piece of tape two months ago. Um, I have a dog with fleas, as you can hear in the background. Sorry for the racket. But this line uh, is showing where I had, had set it up two days ago, and this is indicative of where it's pointing now. So if I was to go up and put a piece of tape right now, this is where this piece of tape would be pointing towards due north. This would be due, due north two days ago, or magnetic north I should say. This would be magnetic north approximately a month ago. This would be magnetic, magnetic north about two, maybe two and a half months ago, up to three months. It's somewhere in that period. I've lost track of time. I'd have to go back and look in the archives to be absolutely sure. Um, unfortunately, uh, I started putting the ar archives on the Dropbox cloud folder about two months ago, so I think I've only got two months of data. So this equates to being conservative between five and six degrees difference over the past two to three months up until now. Um, something else I'm working on, um, if you've kept up with the, the last video or two, we're going to send this code in the same experiment into orbit um, with an initial three days of satellite time on board Artisat 1 or Artisat X. I'm not sure which satellite the uh, experiment will be deployed to. Um, I'll probably deploy at a time when we are expecting a CME. So what I'll do is wait on a CME event and then request uh, that my experiment be uploaded before the CME arrives and then for three days it'll take data in uh, low earth orbit uh, that data is stored to an SD card and at the end of its mission three days later it'll send the raw data um, back to a ground station that I can go download which I will then um, 
plug into a application that I'm working on that is identical to this but instead of receiving it from my ground station via Bluetooth it'll read the log file and print out the same type of graph um, this graph is 15 minutes long it takes a sample each second uh, so the time scales may vary uh, in the new application but it'll have the exact same setup and features uh, but what I'm working on now with the help from um, I don't want to butcher her name so this is uh, thanks to the work of um, Laura Booth who works on the Artisat uh, project for uh, Nano Satisfy uh, there's actually two companies working on the Arduino set one in Artisat X which went up on the last Soyuz payload to the International Space Station and those satellites were deployed from the ISS so they are now in orbit and uh, I think experiments are running now um, they're still getting their website uh, and interface all set up so I'm not sure if experiments are currently running but they should be any day but as I stated earlier I will deploy our experiment uh, at the right time when we can do some real um, space weather analysis and see how it affects the uh, magnetic field so I'll deploy when we are expecting a uh, CME or other uh, significant geomagnetic, uh, geomagnetic event but I wanted to just give you a quick look at her work and I'm going to uh, I plan on expanding on this example which takes the same data but it'll take it from the uh, uh, Artisat magnometer which is almost identical to mine and uh, as a matter of fact you know I'm, I may do this for the ground station as well it's not much different uh, as far as the code that I would have to manipulate but uh Anyway, I'm going to run this. There's nothing connected. So this model is not receiving any data right now, which is why it's kind of just plotting randomly. Um, this initial view allows me to... This is looking down upon the sensor in an X and Y and Z um, configuration. Um, on the keyboard, you can hit 0, 1, 2, and 3 to see... Uh, all X, Y, and Z axes, or you can look at the axis, uh, the axis on a one, on a per basis. So, if I wanted to see only the X axis, there we go. The red dot in the middle signifies that we're looking um, at the X axis, and the green is your Y, the blue is your Z, and if this was was receiving data, you would see it plotting the, the magnetic field uh, visualizing the field on only the z-axis I'm going to hit 2 on the keyboard and this will this should take us to the y-axis so now y is the center of our observation with x-axis to the side and again your z-axis uh, 3 on the keyboard will focus only on the z-axis so there you go. Z is the focal point with X and Y. And then zero will take you back to a all three axis view. Um, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, put a user interface. Uh, a model of, for Artisat, I'll put an actual model of the Artisat uh, satellite cube which is about 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and if I do port this to the ground station I'll have a model mock-up of the sensor and uh, when you toggle through the different focal points I'll uh, have the model change orientation as well to reflect you know how you're looking at the model and how the satellite or the ground station would be oriented 
along the axis. So as you toggle through uh, your focal point and the mock-up model behind it will change. So for example um, what I plan to do is if we're looking at all three axes as we are right now you'd see the cube in a 3D uh, on angle so you'd see you know a side here a side here and the top and the center would be on the bottom module so we would be looking at how this is oriented in orbit Z Y and uh, I mean X Y and Z with Z running uh, through the bipole you can think of the z-axis as running through uh, the center of the earth from the north to the south magnetic poles and then when you look at each individual axis you'll be looking at the satellite either side on head on or from a top down bird view perspective but anyway that's what I'm working on now and uh, Hopefully in the next month or two, um, we'll have some code and uh, 3D models uh, and data sets from Artisat. Um, but anyway, the main focus of the video was to show you the changes that I have noticed um, over the past two to three months. Um, questions, comments, as usual, leave them in, a in the description box. Uh, not description box in the comments and uh, in the description box I will uh, leave a few links uh, where you can view the online live data um, this exports every 15 minutes and just for fun let's put this in a uh, before I conclude this let me put this in a real-time uh, a real-time mode which will plot it as fast as the data can come in. The reason I want to do that is I want to see if there's a increase in the frequency if I tell the ground station go get this data and send it back to me at the max data rate that you can do so. So this is moving much faster now because it is in a real-time mode sampling and sending back and I'm waiting to see what kind of uh, spikes we get. I would expect to see them at about the same frequency as we do when we're sampling once a second. Didn't register, but there was a small one. Every time you hear the beep, that is a detection that is over 200 uh, microteslas, which is quite high. Um, if you convert that to milligauss, it's times 10, so that would be 2,000 milligauss. There we go. So that's 28,400 some milligauss, or 2840, um, 2,840 microteslas. And if you just analyze this one, um, the x axis was involved up until about the zero point. The green went off the chart and the Z component went towards the north. But anyway, I'm going to put this back in 15 minute and one second a sample or one second uh, sampling mode. And since I have a happy on that won't shut up I will conclude this video and if there's more to share um, you'll find it here thanks